This is the official EFL podcast with Mark Clement. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the official EFL podcast with me, Mark Clement. And as Middlesbrough's promotion charge ramps up and Tuba Akpom passes Fabrizio Ravanelli's home goals tally set 25 years ago, what an episode we have got in store for you. We're going to meet the Skybet Championship manager whose team are currently in a sensational run of form. We all know that we're not fair to be to go up. We're not fair to be around the, the playoffs, but we are there. And we would chase the chase the moment, and we would chase the dream. Uh, and at the other hand, we are very realistic that we can also lose the next game in this great league. We'll reflect on the Skybet League Two supporters who can't stop breaking records. Yeah, just incredible, just the sheer number of fans there. Just the noise levels were pretty well, absolutely crazy, really, for a League Two game, like you say. And we'll talk to the Skybet League One goal scoring midfielder whose return has challenged him and his family way beyond football. I could have had it my whole life. I don't really know exactly when I kind of got it as such, but I only found out when I was 18 I moved from Dundee to Burnley. And it was through the medical of that, that's when I found out about it at the time. It's the officially AFL podcast. He played his football in the top leagues of six European countries, won the Champions League with AC Milan and is Denmark's joint top scorer. As a manager, he arrived at Ewood Park off the back of winning successive Swedish titles with Malmo. John Dole Thomason's Blackburn Rovers are in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup and have won their last four in the Sky Bet Championship. So here's my question, Jan. What do you do on a week like this? Because I'm imagining spirits are very high. Everybody's very happy. So what's a manager's job on a week like this? Um, Actually, a normal day at the office. We don't change anything at all. The same same progress like rest of the season. Uh, We have a plan. We follow the plan also when it's going well. There would also be times where it's not going that well in football. So... I would call it quite stable, maybe a bit boring, but with an idea. It's interesting. You understand why I ask it, because I guess you have to let the the boys enjoy the moment because it's sensational form you're in. And that doesn't happen a lot in football, but you don't want them overheating either. No, it's a, it's a fine balance, of course. Uh, Half of the team, uh, I sent them to a 21 game at Leicester. I don't think they enjoyed the travel yesterday. I traveled <laughs> myself to Leicester as well. Uh, but, but on the other hand, we want everybody up to speed within the group because the group needs to help the team in that way. It's not the biggest group. It's a young group, an experienced group, a quite new group as well, who's learning at the job. Uh, so, But they're very committed and they want to develop as well. Uh, of course, we are... We have a plan, we follow that plan. And over time, when you've been training for, for, for weeks, for months, and you've been playing games and we have a lot of meeting, yeah, then you normally would get better. Have you surprised yourselves this season? Now, we all know that this great competition is extremely difficult, extremely tough. The intensity is, is, is extremely high, probably the... the the competition in the world where the intensity is the highest, the demand of players uh, is, is, is a lot. It's a very inconsistent league as well. And of course, it's something to do with the quality of players and the intensity of the games. Uh, at the other hand, I, had a very, I have a very young group. Uh, so in, in, in a way, it's, a, it's, it's tough. Uh, at the other hand, it's, it's great because they are very very keen to learn they're very keen to develop very keen to become better uh, so learning about new principles learning a different way of playing a, a fluent modern way of playing football uh, so we try to stick to the plan we have we need to do things differently here at rowers it's quite simple we don't have the budget or parachute money like the rest of not the rest of the teams but a lot of the teams in the league is a bit fight against the giant in that way uh, but we stick to our plan and, and try to build uh, and be on the construction and we want to be a sustainable club over time. That's interesting. Do you use the 
the minnow tag, the smaller club tag with the boys? Do you do you use it as an incentive to get that extra 5% marginal gain out of them? No, but you use it in that we need to do things differently. We need to follow our plan, our principles, our way we want to play football, our way to, um, to, to describe our identity as a club. Uh, I use it in that way. No mention of automatic, because obviously my side of the fence, we look at the gap being narrowed sometimes, and it's a little bit cat and mouse, has been between Sheffield United and Middlesbrough, then you went above Middlesbrough briefly, but some quotes I read, you seem to be playing that right down and not piling that extra pressure on the guys. Yeah, because I'm a realist. I, I know where, where, we are, where, we are, where we're coming from as club. It's, of course, been extremely tough to be Rover fans the last decade, probably. Uh, and we are slowly building. Um, we want to become better. We need to become better. At the other hand, we all know that we're not fairer to be to go up we're not fair to be around the, the playoffs but we are there and we would chase the chase the moment and we would chase the dream uh, and at the other hand we are very realistic that we can also lose the next game in this great league you know what i i'm very fortunate i get to talk to lots of you and my my favorite part is getting to try and get inside your all your heads and some of the <laughs> some of the guys will be going why not yes we must embrace it this is a lot and then others take the pressure off it's lovely to see the different the different approaches out there yeah but we shouldn't forget to be extremely young squad huh? and 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 normally you need a lot of experience as well to cope with the challenge to cope with the stress uh, and of course, the expectation, which is growing, which is normally our great fans should always dream of better times. Yeah. We're working hard. That's the only thing I can promise. We are following our plan. We are following our principles day, day in and day night. Uh, and, and, and that's the only thing you, can, you actually can do as a, as a club. OK, so here's another one of my questions before I ask some questions about you. Form. No draws in 27 matches then. <laughs> Form in a row mate what is going on there it's it, it drives me crazy that stuff i just can't get my head around it yeah sometimes it also get me crazy <laughs> <laughs> i mean first no, of all not drawing up for not drawing for over half a season is that very much the way in which you lay out you know trying to take the three points every time. Sometimes that means you're a little bit susceptible and might get hit at the other end, but other times you go on and you get the winning goal. Is, is it as simple as that? No, not only. Uh, it's, it's, of course, also part of the, 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 the thing, but we, we, we were very inconsistent, which I think is quite normal. New, 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 new group, a young group. Uh, that disappeared 12 play, uh, players in the summer who all played game time last season and they came six in and the rest was young boys from the youth departments. Yeah, that means it takes time. That means that, uh, that you that you need to learn at the job as well. Uh, we had a transfer market where we where we get where we got the players in quite late as well. Uh, so automatically, yeah, then you will be inconsistent. And and slowly we are building a solid, solid fundament. And I think at Evo Park is a fortress in that way. And we are very consistent now in 2023. And, 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 uh, and that's, of course, a, I'm not surprised about it because we are trying, trying and working hard on the pits and in meetings and on the game days to become better. So I'm not surprised that we are more consistent now. But is it, of course, annoying when you're losing and winning and losing and winning? Of course it is. I hate to lose. My player hate to lose. Our fans hate to lose. But, uh, but is it realistic? Is it normal in that way? Yeah, I think so. And here in 2023, of course, we, uh, we, we had a great run. Here in February, we can talk about a fairy tale. February, in a way, with all those setbacks we had. A lot of India players, not the best transfer window as well. Playing a lot of away games against great sides. Uh, at the other hand, uh, that togetherness uh, we, we created over that period, uh, the spirit within the squad is great. And the development uh, regarding our football style is of course getting better because we're working on it every day. So that's part of the plan, but uh, we, we need to become much better still. Is there a big cultural difference 
between where you came from, you obviously took the decision to leave Malmo and to come over here, and England. Is it, it or is it, is it a universal language of football? Does is most of what you're doing at Ewood Park what you were already doing at, at Malmo? It's always a different thing. England's, of course, the, the, the greatest football country in that way. I'm, I'm not saying it because I talk with you, not at all. Uh, I grew up with English football when I was a young boy, uh, so I know everything about the English game in that way. Uh, and, uh, and Malmö yeah, is, of course, it's extremely, extremely big expectations. Uh, the club who haven't won things for years. Uh, and, uh, and we won two league titles after each other, back-to-back -back league titles and playing Champions League football, um, which is great. Great achievement going four, four, uh, four rounds of qualifications against our champion of countries is, is a quite difficult task. Coming here to England, uh, a club which, uh, which should we say a project in a way, um, where we need to build uh, with young players. Yeah, I so mean, that, that, that word project is an interesting one, isn't it? From just, just listening to you, it seems like you're pretty confident that you are here as best you can be confident with management to see out that three-year contract that you signed. You know how short-term football management is, and yet you're obviously confident enough in your owners that you have got time to lay that base and to get those little increments of improvement, hopefully week on week, month on month, to, to elevate in that way. I think uh, I think it's very important that uh, that the club and the owners has a plan and you follow the plan because in the end of the day, if you look at the budgets and money decides a lot of things in football, uh, we of course not we don't have the highest budget, we don't have the parachute money, so we do need to do it in a different way. If you if you if you should have a chance, and then you need to stick to the plan. Uh, I think that's that's the way things work in life. Uh, if you want to be successful. What your what is it that you do? What is your forte? You know, some some managers like to have a very dominant head coach working to them so they can stand back and watch and are more of a people person. Others like to be on the grass all the time. How would you how would you, des you describe your mix? Uh, probably a mix of everything in that way. I think it's an extremely important to have a clear uh, philosophy how we want to play the game. Uh, you need to have a very good vision how we want to treat people, how we want to com communicate with people within the squad. Uh, to communicate with the press is extremely important. Our fan base, all those things together uh, is, is part of being a, a head coach, which you need to be able to manage uh, if you want to be successful, of course. And your own playing pedigree and the things that you achieved, I read out at the start as I introduced you, do you do you ever humbly use any of those with the boys, i.e. I was once in a similar situation in Milan and this is how we went about it? Or do you push it all to one side and say, no, that's in the past. Uh, this is very much a different part of my life. Um, I, I mostly put it to, to the side, to be honest. I uh, had, had a great football career. I loved it. Had, uh, had the opportunity to work with a lot of very good managers uh, around the world in different countries. And, and, uh, but there was a different time. Of course, as a player, it's a different way of living. And as a footballer as a, and as a manager, you can't compare those things. But I must admit, when I was a player, I took, of course, I kept my eyes and ears open as well with all those good managers around me. So you're able to draw on that and to perhaps cross-refer some of it in a certain situation and say, when I was working under X or Y, this is how he dealt with it? No, I would never use it in that way, no. But of course, ah, right. when, when, if you're, if you're, if you're open-minded, um, then you will also automatically see what, what is going through a daily, on a daily basis and, and make good decision. Uh, football is about making decision uh, as being a head coach. It's about making decision here and, and, and more or less every minute in a way. Look, I'm going to ask you a personal question. No need to worry. No need to panic. Everything's all right. <laughs> but I think when I came to see you just before the season kicked off, I don't think you'd brought the family over, had you? Were the family still up back in Denmark at the time? Well, no, my family is living in Holland. Uh, they were actually here oh, in the Holland. weekend. It was a, 
It was okay. a great weekend. The, the, young, the oldest, he, he trained with Blackburn Rose on the Saturday, and the youngest had a tournament at City, on the 11 tournament at City with Feyenoord on the Sunday. So, so we enjoyed a good weekend after oh. beating Sheffield United. Yeah. That, that, okay, but I guess my question is, it's a big sacrifice you're making to be away from them all for such a long period of time. So who motivates the motivator? Who replenishes your energy levels at this point in the season when you don't have family to hand to be able to sit down and chat around the dinner table every night? That is, of course, you told you right. It's a big, uh, big decision as a family, and 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 we are of course missing each other every day. I have a very strong wife who knows uh, that I have a drive, extremely hard drive in the, in the football world, and she accepted. Uh, and and a big compliment and, and big credit to her uh, to dealing with that. Because of course, it's not easy when the husband is living in our country and is 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 working and working day and night in that way. But, uh, but we used the time as good as possible. So it was great to see the family in the weekend, for example. Yeah. Sorry, when you said you have a very strong wife, I had pictures. I had a picture of her lifting <laughs> things. <laughs> don't don't tell her that. Eh? Don't tell her that. <laughs> I thought you meant she did weightlifting and stuff like that for a little, a little second. Uh, let me, let me just, I, I, I will let ask you when I call her later if she started doing weightlifting. <laughs> Let me just read the fixtures out this coming weekend in the Skybet Championship. Jens Blackburn head to Stoke. That's your Friday night game. Early kickoff on Saturday. Blackpool, mm -hmm. six points from safety. Head to Bristol City in the 12.30 kickoff. And then at three o'clock, we got Burnley with their seven team point gap to third. They entertain another one of the bottom three, Wigan. Keep an eye on Coventry, three points off the playoffs. They've got Hull at home. Gareth Ainsworth looking for his first QPR win at home to Watford. Probably the game of the weekend, on paper at least, is second v fifth. That is Sheffield United against Luton Town. Middlesbrough in third, head to Swansea. And then on Sunday, Norwich into the top six after four wins in five. They entertain Sunderland what have you learned that you didn't know since arriving at Ewood Park? What have you added to your mix, Jan? Um, of course, the, 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 I was surprised that the league is that inconsistent. Uh, I was not surprised about all the great clubs, all the great teams, the, the, the fan space, which is incredible in this league. All the good players were not surprised about that. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the, the intensity of the league, playing a lot of games in a very short period. We already played a lot of games in the league. Of course, had a great cup runs in the two different cups so far, and we're still in the, in the FA Cup. Uh, but, but, but more or less the inconsistency of the league. But I understand that after being here for a while now, but it's a great competition uh, and probably with the intensity, one of the, uh, the toughest competitions in the world. And I mean, obviously, you had a taste of it as a player briefly ish with your spell at Newcastle United. But when you get here, and particularly in a management role, when I guess you're not in the middle of the pitch, you can feel the atmosphere around the stadiums. I mean, we're, we're astonishing. The levels of devotion and dedication from some of these supporters are just nuts, aren't they? It's, it's, it's incredible. <clears throat> So special, and, and, and that's, of course, also one of the reasons that I also wanted to work in England. Uh, I couldn't have started a, at, a, at a European club who were playing qualification for Champions League football. I was playing for the champion uh, in that country, but on the other hand, I wanted to work in England because football in England is special. Uh, the supporter for, 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 for clubs is a way of living. The club is so, it's a, it's a social thing as well, a connection within a, a fan and the football club. And you don't get that in other countries. If you see that uh, that, that we are bringing on a, on a, on a cold night uh, at Leicester in the FA Cup, when we won that game, they suddenly have 3,000 traveling to Leicester like that. Uh, when we were giant killers against West Ham United, we had 3,000 in London on a Tuesday night. This is a special moment and, 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 and football is so great here. Yeah? I mean, listen, this is the 13th season since Blackburn Rovers were in the Premier League. In, in your heart of hearts, as you look forwards and the progress keeps being made, 
is there hope there that one day for those Blackburn fans, they can return to the promised land of the Premier League? Is of course the plan to to build a sustainable club over time, and and uh, and also that the club is where back where it belong. Historical, of course, this have a, of course Blackburn Rose have a historical part of English football uh, in that way. Uh, but it's true, it's been a it's been a tough period for for Rover fans, but they they should dream of course about better times, uh, and then then we are back to that social thing. How important a club is for for a person in England and the surrounding. Jan, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for talking to us on the Officially AFL podcast. And give our love to Mrs. Muscles, won't you? <laughs> I will do that. Have a brilliant Thanks, day. Yeah? The Official EFL podcast with Mark Clint. A new record for a fourth tier game at Valley Parade was set last weekend. Despite this being Bradford City's 19th season, in the bottom two divisions. It was the third time in a year that the club's Skybet League to home attendance was broken. James Milani was there. And I loved the scenes because obviously the victory against Colchester was enhanced by the fact it came in plus three and plus six of 90. I mean, the noise was unbelievable, James. Yeah, it was phenomenal. It was an unbelievable atmosphere. Um, Better atmosphere in injury time, as you say, than, than, than in the, 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 the normal 90 minutes. But um, yeah, just incredible, just the sheer number of fans there. Just the noise levels were pretty, well, absolutely crazy, really, for a League Two game, like you say. Yeah, I mean, I keep hearing about all these brilliant uh, cost cutting initiatives by the club itself. Mm-hmm. Is, it, is it partly that that's putting bums on seats? But is the other part of this the Mark Hughes? Factor um, that... I think it's yeah, I think it's a combination of both. Yeah, that's a fair comment. Um, I, you know, Bradford are sort of almost industry leaders, you could say, really, in terms of pushing affordable football um, for fans. And um, you know, that that's been obviously really well received, and that's been a real successful model, probably for well, you know, since the Mark Lawn sort of era. Um, so you know, a decade or so, at Bradford. Um, but yeah, I'd be lying if I if, if I if I did if I didn't say that Mark Hughes being there isn't isn't a, a little bit of a factor for me. It certainly makes me more likely to get down there and see what's going on. Um, yeah, so it's a combination of both things. Yeah, I'll just explain for anybody that doesn't know the reference to Mark Lawn. Mark Lawn is a former. A chairman who was at the helm around the time of reaching the League Cup final under Phil Parkinson. That's right. um, your own roots of support goes back a long way. I mean, you're obviously a, 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 quite clearly a middle-aged man to me now, James, but have you been uh, going decades and decades? Yeah, well, I've, I've been a regular um, attender down at Valley Parade since the sort of 97, 98 season. So, you know, when we were just appearing back in the championship um, in the Chris Kamara era. Um, and yeah, um, probably had a few years away when, when I went away to university and stuff, but you know, drawn straight back in when I came back and been a season ticket holder for about 12 years or so now. I mean, you, you know, hand on heart, did you gasp a little bit? when Mark Hughes was appointed just over a year ago? Because on the one hand, it's incredible football icon in, in charge of your beloved club. On the other hand, we've seen those things go spectacularly wrong over the years where a high profile figure comes in, can't cope with a level, et cetera, et cetera. So are you very happily surprised and revitalized um, by it all? I mean, I think it was a it, it was a big boost for the club when Mark Hughes did come in, but yeah, it certainly intrigued me when I heard the news, um, and, and and especially I don't know if I'm getting this right, but there were stories of potentially a, an email might have gone in from either Mark Hughes or a representative of his, and it had been missed, and then it was picked up at a later date. Yeah, it all sounded a little bit incredible, but you know, clearly there was a, more than a shred of truth in in that. Um, yeah. It, 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 <laughs> I think it was a big boost for the club, um, but like, like, as you say, you know, you, you wonder what's around the corner. Um, particularly as a Bradford fan, and we've seen more, more more than our fair share of ups and downs and short managerial stints. You know, from some big names in the past as well. You know, Mark Hughes is yeah. a big name manager. I'm thinking back to people like 
Brian Robson, you know, and well, there's a, there's a big list of, of, of big names that have been there when it hasn't worked. Yeah. Um, but yeah, pleasantly, I won't say pleasantly surprised because I don't know what I didn't, I, honestly, hand on heart, I don't know what I expected to happen. Um, that's probably the best approach as a Bradford City fan I've found through the years as well. Just expect anything to happen, you know. But, yeah. I, do you know what? We've got you on and we've just had uh, Yundal Thomason on the, the Blackburn manager and he's been talking about, you know, it's it, the club's been in the doldrums for a while. It, it takes a lot of dedication to stick with big clubs when they've seen glory days, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. decades I, off, doesn't it? You know, I, I think once you hooked, you hooked out, you generally speaking, you know, as a, as a, as a yeah. young football fan. I mean, we, we, we mentioned, I mentioned the sort of affordability factor at Bradford and I, and I referenced the Mark Lawn era and stuff like that. But, you know, to tell you, my, my origins as a fan, and I don't want to portray myself as too much of a tight Yorkshireman, but, you know, it's definitely there in my <laughs> inner fabric. Um, I mean, I, I, I remember, you know, cutting uh, vouchers out of the back of the Telegraph and Argus, you know, the Bradford local newspaper, where you could go for a pound if you were under 16 in the 90s. And that was a Jeffrey Richmond thing, so... I don't know. That's that's probably why that's that's revisiting your earlier question. But you know, that's where I got hooked. But I, but you, you go see your team. You, you, you hear the crowd. You get you know. You, you go to a few exciting games, and that's it. Um, so you meant you know you referenced like when, when you've seen successes previously. Yeah, we've had some successes, but to be honest with you, my really, I, I think of us as kind of a, and I probably get. But criticism for saying this, but I kind of see us as like a League One, League Two team because that's just been my predominantly my experience as a Bradford fan. However, I don't see us as a as a League One, League Two club, as in like that's where we belong. And it certainly doesn't. It's never felt like that as a fan experience in in the ground. Um, you know, and that links us back to the, the, the amazing crowd on Saturday. You know, for me, crowds have always been pretty good. Valley period, you know, it's never felt like we belonged in League Two, yet we've spent so much time down there. So, you know, it's always been interesting, I suppose, as a fan, as a Bradford fan. Now, listen, yeah, one hundred percent. Now, listen, I wanted to do something on this episode that reflected this breaking the home attendance record for the the fourth tier again in such a short space of time. And in my head, I'm thinking I was kind of aware of the Bangla. Phantoms, because obviously 25% mm-hmm. of the population of, uh, you know, the wider yeah. Bradford conurbation is Asian mm-hmm. or British Asian. And, but, then, but then I became aware that obviously we did have that migration of Poles and Ukrainians after the Second World War. And yeah. you've got a little insight into this world because your missus is... Third that's generation that, Ukrainian. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely correct. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a cliche in that my girlfriend became my wife, and it, um, so, you know, so I've been going out with her since I was in the upper six. So that's like what 1998, 99. So a fair while I've been around her family and everything, and she's yeah, she's she's the product of uh, three Ukrainian grandparents, uh, so uh, and then and an Italian grandparent. So. Um, yeah, there's, there's, I found out at that time that there's, there was actually a much bigger um, community of Ukrainians in Bradford that I was kind of half aware of, but not really. Um, and there's, there's a pretty big community there. Um, you know, as you say, they all came over that that her grandparents' generation, what like late 1940s, early 1950s, and you know, there's a, there's a kind of a bit of. Um, is it the right word? Sort of symmetry, really. Kind of, it's it's come it's gone round in a circle now, and and now you've had obviously that we've had since the, you know, the illegal um, Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, another big influx of Ukrainian immigrants who've, who've come to the city, um, and the, the, yeah, it's kind of like sort of we're experiencing what happened sixty years ago. Yeah, and I mean, I know that um, as much as your own children were born here, you try and keep up the links with the family's heritage on your wife's side. They go off to Ukrainian school, oh, yeah, Saturday, Saturday morning, morning school. Or Saturday morning yeah, yeah. School. So, yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'll tell you about my son's typical Saturday morning um, is, you know, he'll, he'll uh, enthusiastically run down to Ukrainian Saturday school with his mum, yeah. um, early yeah. doors, and uh, 
you know, and if Bradford are playing at home, usually I'll, I'll, I'll appear later on, uh, pick him up and we'll go straight down to Viper Red from there. I mean, the, the Ukrainian social club and, and, and school, um, like cultural centre, is in Lidget Green in Bradford, which is, you know, a 15-minute walk from Valley Parade, uh, not that far away. Um, and, yeah, there's, there's a link there. There's an association and there's a kind of a link for my son, really, you know, kind of he goes there and then he'll go up Bradford City, etc. But... Yeah, the, 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 it's a big thing for my my wife's family to keep that sort of cultural heritage um, alive. Um, it's become obviously very poignant very, uh, in the last year or so, more than at any other time to do that. Um, you know, and it, it, Pixley grew up on Saturday from Ukrainian school and, and, and also I knock on the classroom door. And um, that classroom is half full of, you know, Ukrainian uh, children, you know, born in Ukraine who are obviously over here in difficult circumstances at the moment. So, you know, there's a real kind of, um, I don't know what, what's the way to describe it. Um, just, I suppose, poignancy really sort of about it all. Yeah, quite. And, and, uh, to come full circle or to use your phrase, uh, the, the sort of synergy again coming all the mm. way around is, I mean, there, there is, also a group of a fan group called Ukrainian Bantam. So the identity is maintained as part of the supporter base that's, of that's Bradford right. City. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I, I would class myself as a sort of associate member of, of the Ukrainian Bantams, but, you know, but a very enthusiastic one. Um, but yeah, like, um, it's actually some, a few of my wife's cousins that, that, that set the Ukrainian Bantams up. Um, and as you say, very much just to kind of forge that link between the Ukrainian community and 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 and, and uh, Bradford City, um, and it's you know that's that, that that's been kind of quite a big deal really um, for the local Ukrainian community. Certainly, the people that I that I see on a regular basis um, in the last year or so. Um, I don't want to preempt your next question or anything, but you know, like you know, just that through that link, you know, we've had a lot of contact with the club. Um, in, in the past 12 months um, and it's you know it's been a real positive thing yeah well and and they have also provided free tickets for refugees and also yeah. done had an emergency appeal fundraising contributed towards mm -hmm. uh, deliveries being taken emergency aid deliveries being shipped out to ukraine to help so we come full circle again don't we james yeah, yeah, yes, as you say, yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've got, I can't praise the club enough, um, and, and I'm extremely proud of the club as a Bradford fan just to see how it's put its arm around, you know, the Ukrainian community in Bradford. Um, you, you referenced a couple of things that they've done there. Um, yeah, there was an evening down at um, the Ukrainian club a couple of Saturdays ago where Gary Jones came and sort of marks the 10 year anniversary nicely with. Uh, uh, you know, the League Cup final appearance and, and that League Cup run. Uh, and it coincided with the, the one year anniversary, the anniversary of the Russian invasion, obviously, of Ukraine. Um, and, you know, Michael Helinski and Petra Himera, the, the guys who set the Ukrainian band teams up, contacted the club and uh, let them know about it. And, and, and I think the club really put their arms around us and, and, and supported in any way it could. I mean, we had a don't really want to go back to it and think about it because it wasn't an enjoyable afternoon at Valley Parade that day, but we played, uh, I can't remember who we played, actually, the manager's gone blank. It was a game to forget um, and we lost. Okay. Um, and, you know, but Brian Sparks, uh, so this, the CEO, came to the event and he still came, you know, in the evening, even despite, a, you know, a, a pretty grim defeat at home. Um yeah. Yeah, he still came and supported the event. I know various players signed, uh, you know, memorabilia and stuff like that, and passed it on, like to, to auction off and stuff like that. And, and, and other members of the um, the wider Bradford fan base obviously supported it really well. Um, uh, Bantam's Banter, who were uh, so like sort of a podcast sort of fame in the Bradford city sort of circles um, came and, and hosted the event, you know, for free, giving their time up for free. So there was a lot of support from, you know, from sort of wider, the wider Bradford fans, sort of fan base, you know, to, to help it and it made it a big success. 
Yeah, James, it shouldn't surprise me because I've been in and around this industry now for a couple of decades, and yet it does the stuff that goes on around our football league mm. clubs. Uh, the the wider population has no idea about. Just bear with me while I just uh, mark people's cards about the fixtures in Skybet League 2 this coming weekend. Friday night, see Salford currently occupying one of the playoff places, go to Crew, And then on Saturday, these are all three o'clock kickoffs. Well, actually... We'll just mark all the playoff contenders. Uh, Stockport go to Colchester. Northampton are at Hartlepool. The leaders, Leighton Orange, are at Mansfield. Bradford themselves are at Newport. Stevenage, who've dropped to third, although they do have a game in hand. They're at home to Walsall. And Carlisle are at Swindon. As with all the rest of the divisions, there is a smattering of fixtures in Skybet League 2 this coming weekend. A dozen games to go, and you are very much in the mix, are you not, James? Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm starting to believe there's maybe, yeah, there's, 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 a, there's a realistic chance of us really pushing for automatic places. Um, you know, um, why not believe, you know, when you look at our, our recent run of form? Um, I think we've got we've got a strong squad, you know. We've got Mark Hughes leading us, um, who is, you know, if there were any doubts, is you know, uh, as to as to how far he can take the club and, and what he can do for us, you know, I think those doubters have been silenced recently. Um, it's exciting. Why not? James, it's been lovely to talk to you, and thanks for just fleshing out the stories of all the club has done to help the beleaguered Ukrainian community and give a little bit of happiness on the, the terraces of Bradford City occasionally and the odd late bit of drama like last weekend for those that have got far, far bigger issues to worry about. Lovely to talk to you. Thanks very much. Thank you. The official EFL podcast with Mark Clint. Let's finish this week with the best good news story of the EFL season today. Scottish international midfielder Kevin McDonald's two goals and three starts for Exeter City in Skybet League One since signing on January transfer deadline day. But of course, Kevin, that is only part of the story because it marks your return to English football for the first time since you're your kidney transplant. So first things first, how's your health? Yeah, good, yeah. Um, health's um, back in, in work in order. Uh, so that's the main thing. Uh, that's obviously always going to be priority for um, for the rest of my career and obviously the rest of my life. So we're, um, we're, all, we're all going the right direction and, and long may it continue. I mean, you know, I... I often have these conversations with players who've maybe had a big injury, I don't know, a cruise shirt, when they go into that first challenge afterwards about what goes through your head. I mean, just watching you, you're still chucking yourself about, mate, aren't you? So it's clearly not its clearly not in your head when you're out. Or is it? I mean, you tell me. No, I think like there's obviously a certain elements in certain times, probably more so a training day-to-day these type of things, but I'm in a position now where I've got to get on to it. I've got to just get on with it. I'm, I'm employed by uh, by Exeter City, and and, and I'm, I'm one of a one of a number as such. Uh, I'm one of a group of lads that we're all in the same boat, all all striving for the same thing, and to, to get three points each weekend. And and ultimately, that's how it is. Uh, of course, I've always got to take extra precaution at, at certain times, and there will be times where obviously I need to do that. But in terms of uh, mind, mind frame, mindset going into each game. It's that like, okay, we're here to work, and, and and that's how it is, and it's all it's always the way it's going to be. Yeah, and, and and I get that and respect that professionally, and duty's duty. But you you are also the partner to a wife girlfriend. You are also the the dad to a couple of little girls. So they 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 must have had to double check with you that you're not overdoing it, pushing the professional margins too hard and you are going to come back in the door at the end of every day, you know? Yeah, I mean, I understand that from that side of things. I mean, I don't think anything I've ever pushed myself to an unbelievable limit my whole career, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> maybe towards the, the, the latter parts, maybe, but uh, no. Um, yeah, like, it's one of them, of course, obviously, you've got that, that side of things, which is, um, is always going to be, obviously, number one, of course. 
Um, but as I get, it's one of them ones that, uh, with the way I am, the way I train, the way I play, I, I kind of fully commit with being. I probably say with being clever, but with being probably streetwise is probably the right word. And I think again, I've probably done that throughout my career, but probably even more so now. I probably take more care on it, on certain sides of things. Yeah. Just remind me again, did you not get promoted to the Premier League three times, once with Burnley, twice with Fulham? Yeah, yeah. And get promoted from League One to the Championship with Wolves? Yeah, yeah, well, League One promotion, yeah, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't think that happened by accident, did it? Unless you had a, a very strong contribution to make to all those teams. You're being very <laughs> modest. Do you mind if we get serious for a couple of minutes? Yeah. Because, um, I mean, first of all, was there ever a point where you thought you might not return to football as a result of your deteriorating <clears throat> kidney function? I think um, there was always a massive, a massive part of that, and I think that's probably why in the last season I, I was under contract at Fulham. I spoke to the club and decided to kind of go into a coaching side with under twenty threes and under eighteens. Um, I think I had an option at the time. It was maybe like a Nottingham Forest or someone to go and loan to in that season, and it was one of them ones. Right, you know, an extra forty games or so could be great, but at the same time. After that, I might not be able to play again. So we need to put put things in place in case I couldn't play again. So I, I wasn't really the the best in school, to say the least. So um, I wouldn't have had many options. So um, it was it was one of the ones we we went in and spoke with Phil and said, right, listen, this is what I'd like to do. And then to be fair, they, they were absolutely top draw, um, and they have been to this day. They'll help me out with anything, which probably is a very rare thing. But they've been absolutely amazing. I can't speak highly enough of them. And at that time, they were. They were amazing and they were like, listen, you do whatever you need to do and, and that's how it was. And um, I really enjoyed that year looking into the kind of coaching side of things. So I'd always I'd train three days a week and I'd coach twice a week. And um, the academy side of things was, was amazing. And, and yeah, so that was kind of put there in place in case obviously we couldn't get back. I was kind of, I'd done my B licence towards the end of my A licence at the same time and stuff. So... These things were put in place, but the ultimate goal was always to get back playing. And until it was physically like impossible to get back playing as such, that was um, that was that was the main aim. And coaching would have been sick and fiddle. But um, yeah, there was times. But thankfully, we've not need to uh, approach them times just yet. I mean, uh, forgive me. You know, your own life far better than me. But if I understand right, you, you had this problem from from kind of teenage years through but then it kind of reached a point where something had to be done about it uh, at the point that we're talking about which was your operation was just less than two years ago yeah um so i i, I mean i don't really know i could have had it my whole life i don't really know exactly when i kind of got it as such but i only found out when i was 18 i moved from dundee to burnley and it was through the medical of that that's when i found out about it at the time um so and since then, obviously, I've kind of been on medications, and, and ultimately, the, the end goal was to get a transplant because there's no no cure for the, the kidney disease I had. Um, so I firmly put it to the back of my mind for a long time, clearly, and got on with the football career. So at the same time, as, as I was signing for Burnley, I was a little bit worried about that side of things, what was going to happen longer term. But at the same time, I was starting a career in England. I was absolutely buzzing. So it was kind of two different emotions. Um, and then, yeah, as as you said, as times went on and things have deteriorated over time, slowly over time, it was like it kind of got a little bit, probably, yeah, a little bit fast forwarded to, towards that time, and then it was ultimately that I came in to put things in place to get this uh, transplant started. Yeah, I mean, to get really, really serious, I cannot imagine the conversations between you and your brother Fraser, who it was who gave you one of his kidneys, because on the one hand, he would. Presume, well, on the one hand, he wants to help you. On the other hand, I guess you want to protect him and make sure he's not doing anything that... Oh, I mean, I, you know what I'm trying to say, and that's why yeah, yeah. I get muddled asking the question. Yeah, well, I think, um, what, what obviously, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a strange situation. To be honest with you, it was quite probably quite refreshing at the end of the day. It wasn't just my brother that was that was there. All my family members were, were willing to donate a kidney. A lot of my friends were, and so... It was great to have up, have options. Uh, that was that was a, that was a huge a huge huge thing. Like to, to be able to actually have a few options if one person's failed or whatever else that or it didn't match and this and that. So that was that was obviously a real blessing. That was I say this to every single interview, every single person I've done ever since. I thank every single person who was willing to even take the consideration or or whoever was Amazing. was willing to donate. So, but it wouldn't have got to a point where where my brother would have been allowed. So they go through a thorough test, as you can imagine. 
Um, one of my one of my good friends went through the test as well, and it turned out that his one of his kidney, kidneys wasn't as good. So if he donated his kidney longer term, he might have he might have had complications. So all these things are put in place. So there's no risk for for my brother now. Uh, longer term, he can live a normal, full life with one kidney, and that again, that was the main thing because, of course, if, if something then happens with him, you don't go to the next person until you get a kidney. Then did they have him there? So I, I mean, just on the off chance that somebody is perhaps in the early stages of this, it, it's all about getting the right professional care, obviously, but finding that match and also looking at the lifespan going on of the donor as well as you as the recipient yeah it's not uh and, and what's amazing about it is that it's complete two complete opposite sides that's what i find is me and my brother spoke about before like i've got no input on his side of his uh it's called a world cup his work up of his call his blood tests urine tests all these scans and stuff and they've got no 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 like input on mines. It's just in case there's any sort of bribery, in case there's any sort of things going on. It was quite strange. It was to be honest with you. <laughs> um, it's like kind of, and then you just kind of come together. Right? Okay, it's a match. We can do this. We can do that. And then right, that's that's what happens. But until that point, like I wouldn't be able to phone his kidney side. Oh, what's happening? His face okay. This and that. It's, it's just like it's two uh, it's two complete opposite sides. So it was strange in that sense. But yeah, I mean, obviously we're trying to get me. Uh, kidneys working better to live obviously the life that obviously we all want and at the same time we need to look out for who was going to be the donor to make sure that nothing's going to then happen. My brother's got obviously a wife and two kids as well so you don't want anything to potentially happen to him in, 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 in a few years or whatever else like that so once everyone was kind of like set and everyone was okay on, on both sides or sponsors mainly my brother's side it was like right we can start to now plan this. Uh staggering story I was just wondering how many times you've actually done this interview over the last couple of months or over the last couple of years even I've done I mean I've done a few of course but um, it's not it's not it's not a it's not a, it's not a sad story it's not a it's, no, a, no, no, it's, a, it's no. an emotional it's, a, it's an emotional story that sometimes people if it, if it gets out to one percent of or if it gets out to one per, one person ten people whatever it may be then um then if it makes a difference to someone in someone's way or a little bit of positivity the way it goes through the next thing then that's that's ultimately what what it's for at the same time as much as it's a, it's a nice story and, a, and, a, and a, the way we've got through things and stuff together and that's great but at the same time if we can reach out to people further then then even better uh, as you wheeled away having scored your first goal since the operation did it did did the moment pop into your head the realization of what is it? no you're purely in professional mode i think like i don't think it did to be honest with you to to, to be blunt you know I, I don't think it really crossed my mind i think probably once i sat down and had a lot of messages come through and stuff i think at that side that it was like right, okay you know listen like you're doing well to first be back back out on the pitch but to then be able to score goals where you know i mean i've never been a natural goal scorer as it is but um for it to be a nice goal and, a, and, a, and a, on a nice occasion it was I mean, it was looking back. It was great. It's probably a, 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 a another marker where it's when well, since the transplant has been right. Okay, let's get get walking again. Let's get on the bike again. Let's get running. Let's get playing. Another box has been ticked. You know what I mean? So it's, that's the way I've kind of seen it. It's a goal which that could be easy not came. I could have retired without another goal. Do you know what I mean? So um, that was nice. And obviously to then score two goals in a couple of games, which is extremely extremely rare. I don't even know if I've done it before to go honest with you. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's good. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. What's the connection you and Gary Caldwell, your manager? Then was that coaching courses or never, some... never, 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 um, never met him. Never, never once met him. He, my, um, his brother was my captain uh, at Burnley. Stevie Caldwell was the captain. Of course, yeah. But there was no, no, no connection at all between myself and the manager. Never, never spoke to him or uh, never, met, never came across him. Uh, so yeah, so it's just strange how football works, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I, I I wonder whether this, if this is a a really great time to be at Exeter City. I'll tell you why. I mean, Matt Teller, the previous manager, did an unbelievable job repositioning them, edging closer and closer towards promotion. Missed out in the playoffs a few times, but I I guess with him moving on for positive reasons to go to Rotherham, mm -hmm. it is an opportunity to to kind of reset. It's not just like moving what was in League Two into League One, but lots of new blood coming in, and it's the dawn of a new era and and a manager that doesn't necessarily 
carry with him all that's gone over the last few years. Yeah, I, I think it's an exciting time since I've came in. Obviously, we're now in a new building at the training ground, which is which makes a huge, huge difference to the training ground. Is, on the whole, it's more a, a proper, a properly run football club with everything's in place now. Um, so you've got that side of things, and then you've got a manager in, in here who I've been really impressed with since I've came in. The 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 ideas, the way he wants to work, the way he wants to play is is, is absolutely spot on. I mean, it's, it's a huge part of obviously why I've signed. Um, then you'll they throw that together with the team that's there in front of at his disposal with a good mixture of a lot of good young players with some good senior pros and a good mix. Um, and and yeah, since I've since I've been here, games I've played, games I've not played. Um, the team have done well. The team have performed well. What's not what's not clicked is probably at, at times in a final third to, to maybe to get, get a goal. Sometimes you need a goal to fall to you. Probably like mine's on Saturday, but these type of things that then. When you're in a bit more control, and when you start scoring goals, you these one these one points could become three, and you know you don't know where that can take you. But on the whole, I think the manager, I think the club are pleased with where we're at at this moment in time after getting promoted last season because we're putting in some real good performances at this moment in time. And I think it speaks volumes when we come away from Wickham on Saturday after drawing one each, and we're disappointed because we think right we should have won that game there. So it's trending in the right direction for sure. I I'm, I'm about to uh, just mark everybody's cart with a few of the big fixtures this coming weekend in Skybet League One. And I'm about to mention uh, the rivals from just along from Exeter. I, I'll not say the word yet, and you don't have to say it. Do you, you know, when you go into a new club and you've obviously moved about a bit, and you, I, I, it's lovely that first couple of weeks having to find out who the rivals are, aren't you? So you don't put your foot in it during interviews and stuff. I, 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 mean, I mean, there can't be many rivals down this way anyway, because you're miles away from everything, so... Well, I think uh, there's, I think, I think there's one with a strong Scottish connection. Uh, maybe uh, something to do with the Argyle and Sutherland as, um, yeah. you know, army no, um, group. Yeah, no, no. Obviously, we know it's a, it's, it's, it's a big rival for the club. I mean, being, being honest, before, but before I came here, I never looked at it and thought, oh, Exeter, Plymouth, nah, it's, you know, being, being, there's no, there's no point lying. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so that 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 that'll come obviously soon enough, and that'll be a big occasion for you know what it's like. It's a, it's a it's a big fans game, isn't it? At the same at the same time, as much as fans love it, both sets of fans, we're here to do business. We're here to perform the way the way we do at, at Port Vale or, or Plymouth, whatever it may be. It's it's, it's 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 we focus in the right way, and that's that's how it is. It's always going to be that way. Yeah, and I was just mentioning it because obviously over the years you'll have had your Burnley, Blackburns, and well. All the rest of those rivalries encapsulating the clubs there. So, Skybet League One this coming weekend. These are all three o'clock Saturdays. Plymouth Argyle travel to Barnsley and Bolton entertain Ipswich. The four of the top six play each other. Exeter at home to Lincoln City. Forest Green Rovers still looking for a first win under big Duncan Ferguson, actually. And in fact, a first win in 15 matches if they got it. They have got a derby as such against Bristol Rovers. Derby County are at Oxford United. Sheffield Wednesday are the leaders. Just two games off going half a season unbeaten. They are at Portsmouth. And there's a smattering of games on Tuesday night as well. The missus is coming down. You're all going to be, you're not going to try and go backwards, forwards. They're all going to come and join you. It's your life for the foreseeable future down in that neck of the woods in Devon. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, once they once they come down and join, that'd be great. Um, you know, it's once having everyone together because right at this moment of time, she's up there with two babies, and I'm down here alone. So I mean, I've got it kind of easy streets just now. Uh, so so yeah, once everyone comes down, you know, you kind of get settled, and then that's that's us here, and we look to enjoy it. She'll enjoy this this area for sure, and, and the kids will as well. And and yeah, we'll we'll see how we get on for sure. Yeah, you've had quite a last six weeks, really, haven't you? Because obviously you did have your your signing for Exeter, and then what we've already discussed, and the second of those babies is what six weeks old now? No, no, less than that. Uh, I mean, I should know this. Um, uh, yeah, but yeah, careful so here, careful. If your missus so is seven, listening, you're in bother. Seventeenth of February was uh, was the was the birth, so not not long at all. So. Yeah, just over. Uh, I mean, just over two weeks. I'm going for yeah. Man, you have had uh, busy times. 
Yeah, it is crazy times. It's the full range of emotions flooding through you, I'm guessing, at those times. Kevin, sincerely, it is brilliant to have you on. I'm so delighted for you. Things have worked out. You've got through the other side. And uh, you keep being your normal laid-back self and see if you can get another three or four promotions before you retire. Thank Great you very to much. Talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. That is it for this episode. A big thank you to Kevin McDonald, our Bradford City supporter, James Milani, and also to Yundall Thomason. If you've enjoyed it, then please do give us a five-star rating. Press the subscribe button and share on your socials. If you'd like to get in touch with us, our email address is podcast at efl.com. That's podcast at efl.com. I'm Mark Clement. Join us again soon for another episode of The Official EFL Podcast.